I've always felt that the history of astronomy is really the history of the becoming of the human species. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I would wander around in the backyard and you look out and you start to see things and things are moving and things are changing and as you grow older you start to you know see more of the world and the world gets bigger and you become more aware of what's around you and and that includes the world you know you get out you adventure you see things uh, in astronomy we do the same thing we peer out into the universe and we look at how the earth is related to other things in the universe we see how its motion affects that of the moon for example and we can see how the moon orbits the earth we can start to plot its motions and see its trajectories and understand the laws of physics that connect what's happening on the earth to what's happening in the sky even to the point where certain events certain amazing events like solar eclipses become predictable things that we can foresee point where we're routinely in orbit around the earth and we've sent people off of the planet people have had a chance to look back and see what our earth looks like Most of this exploration has taken place from the surface of the Earth, and we've built instruments which let us peer deeper and deeper into the sky, first noticing the motion of the planets, then noticing the motion of the stars, building larger telescopes that collect more light, that can see great detail on planetary surfaces and can count and categorize the number of stars. Uh, these observatories are enormous, and they take incredible amounts of effort for humanity to build and maintain, and they tell us about the nature of the universe. And even at this point, where we're effectively out in the universe, off of our own planet, we're still at the point where we sit on this little rock and we gather light, light that comes to us from a great distance. If you take the nearby galaxies, the Andromeda galaxy being the closest example, uh, it's enormous. It covers more area on the night sky than the full moon. And over a hundred years ago, we didn't even know if it was part of our own Milky Way or whether it was a distant galaxy in its own right. The telescopes of the time couldn't resolve the stars within the Andromeda galaxy. It wasn't until Edwin Hubble resolved the first stars in the Andromeda galaxy that we knew that it was a collection of stars in and of itself. One of the stars that Hubble identified was something called a Cepheid variable. This is a variable star that pulsates at a rate that is proportional to how luminous it is. And so if we can measure how bright it appears, we can actually measure the distance to any object that contains one by simply uh, finding a star that happens to have that period and then relating that to how bright it really is. And once we know how bright it really is and how bright it appears and we calculate the distance, we can learn how far away that object is. And the Cepheid variables that Hubble discovered inside of the Andromeda galaxy determined conclusively that they were that Andromeda galaxy was outside of our own Milky Way. And in fact was a collection of stars in and of itself over two million light years away. Now since then we've observed countless numbers of galaxies all over the sky. Some of them have spiral arms like our Milky Way that contain uh, star-forming regions. 
Uh, some have bars in the center, some have very prominent dust lanes on the outside. Some have very little dust, and some are almost completely devoid of dust and just look like uh, little globs of stars. They're collected in groups, and they collide with one another. They're some of the most breathtaking objects that we see in the night sky. We see collections of galaxies called clusters. Every single dot you're seeing containing hundreds of billions of stars stretching back to the very earliest part of the observable universe. 